Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited today. I have almost a full face of e.l.f. stuff here that I have been playing with all week long. Um, I wanted to do a full face of e.l.f., but I didn't have a full face because I'm missing a couple things, so we'll hold off on that video for a later time. But I had so much fun, like I said, playing with these products this week. Um, testing out e.l.f. shadows, liners, brow products, uh, powders, blushes, bronzers, lip products. It was quite the experience and some of it was surprising. Some of it was a pleasant surprise and some of it was a not so pleasant surprise. But uh, yeah, for the looks with these two minis, I am wearing pretty much a full face yeah. elf. I don't have setting powder or eyeliner for the waterline, but um, I did try out the foundation and stuff like that. I am wearing a different foundation today that I wanted to start testing out before I got my boxy charm this month. But uh, yeah, I've got a couple of the new liquid shadows. Like I said, I have three of these little minis and a bunch of other products so if that sounds interesting to you and you don't mind that you'll hear my special needs child now and then a little bit then just keep on watching and we will get into this almost full face elf and these eye tutorials and yeah starting out i took the lightest tan shade from the carnival candy palette and I worked that all through my crease, setting down that primer. Then I took the lightest green from the Jalapeno palette and worked that as my transition shade for this look. Using that first brush, I buffed out the edges. Then I went into the darkest green in the Hot Jalapeno palette and worked that on the outer and inner parts of this eye look, creating my spotlight type eye. I put some NYX Glitter Primer down and I went into the green shimmer in that Jalapeno palette and put that all over the empty spot in my lid. Then I took the other side of that brush and put the gold right in the middle just to add a spotlight type effect. Going back with that brush we used on that darkest green to make sure everything was seamless. Then I used the e.l.f. eyeliner and I lined, uh, did my wing. This is not bad. I. Uh, I think it wore quite nicely throughout the day. And yeah. Then I took 24 karat gold, one of their new liquid eyeliners, and I just lined right across the top of my wing just to create a little something something and try out that liquid liner work quite well. I also ended up putting this in my inner corner. Then I just took that darkest green and stamped it real close to my lower lash line and buffed it out with the lightest green just so we're matching the top a little bit. Then I'm going to take the green shimmer from the palette and I'm going to stamp that across most of the middle of that lower lash line. And right in the middle of that, I'm going to go in with that gold. Then I took my e.l.f. Lashes in Drama Queen and it didn't take me long to realize the tweezers and that are crap, so just so you know. But I liked them. I didn't even have to trim them, and I liked that. This is the e.l.f. mascara. 
I ended up trying to do two coats, even though it was a waterproof mascara, which is not really my jam, but it was that day. And those are the Drama Queen lashes you'll see here. That tweezer they come with is just not good, so I ended up just using my velour tweezers. And, yeah, once I got those on, that completed the look, and here's the final look. Thanks for watching, guys. Okay, for this look, we're going to use the Acai palette, and I'm going to start out with the lightest pastel purple on a big, fluffy blending brush, and work that all through my crease. I did have to go in a couple of times to build this up to the opacity I like. Uh, some people really like that, some people not so much. I don't mind as long as it wears well during the day, so yeah. Then I took a little bit smaller of a blending brush into that dark purple just to deepen up that outer V and slightly up into the crease. I was actually surprised how well this shade worked. Sometimes purples can be tricky and this one didn't seem bad to work with. Just saying. Then I went back with that first blush brush to make sure everything was blended out nicely and looking as seamless as possible. Mm. Then I am going to dip in just one more time to further deepen up that outer V. I thought it needed just a little bit more depth. Mm. And then I'm going to go in with my NYX Glitter Primer and use that like my fake cut crease situation like I do with all my shimmers, of course. Mm. 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 Then I'm just going to take a flat brush into that first of the two shimmers. Um, the shadows don't have names, so this is where we are. Then I was going to just flip that brush over and use it in the other shimmer, but I decided to try my finger because I thought it might apply better and I definitely was more happy with it. I even went in with that first shade to blend them back and forth to get them seamless. Then I used the e.l.f. eyeliner. I like this eyeliner. I think it actually wears quite well. Um, yeah, I don't think I'll repurchase the Anastasia one, to be honest, because this one pretty much does the same thing. And yeah, I'm about being more price conscious in 2020 so mm -hmm. then I just took an angled brush into that dark purple and started lining under my eyes sorry if you can hear Thomas in the background then I got a fluffy pencil brush in that light purple and again I definitely had to dip in a couple of times to build that up to the opacity I wanted Then I started out by going in with my Jaclyn highlight in the inner corner because there's definitely nothing in the palette for the inner corner, but I changed this a little bit later and you'll see that. But I think it's great for the brow bone, but you can use any highlight that makes you happy. Mm. Then I got a little rye baby from ColourPop for my waterline. I love this light baby purple type shade. I think it is absolutely stunning. And then my waterproof length and volume mascara. This is a waterproof mascara. But, and I gotta say, you definitely have to keep going in and in and in with coats. You can build it up to be quite pretty. It just takes a lot of building up and yeah I usually don't have time for that but in a budget friendly world we build
and Thomas squeaks in the background. <laughs> then those same drama queen elf lashes, they're the only ones I have at the moment, so they're the ones I'm using for all the looks. Little My Elf Setting Mist, and pat all those powders into the skin like per usual. Now this is where I actually go in with a little um, Drama Queen, one of the liquid liners I got. I actually think these are very nice. I really like wearing them. And yeah, I could compare them to the steel ones. And this is the final look. What do you guys think? And tomorrow we'll get down with one more look. So let me know in the comments about this one. Okay, so we're going into the carnival candy for this look. I'm going to take a big flush, fluffy brush into that lightest tan color and use that all through my crease. I put this pretty much up to the brow bone. Then with a bit of a smaller fluffy brush, I'm going to go in with that coffee brown. Nice, more like a caramel brown. But yeah, these, uh, these blended so nicely. I cannot believe this is Elf. Elf, where have you been all my life? <laughs> then with kind of a packer brush, I use that reddish brown to deepen up my outer V and I brought this slightly up into the crease. I did kind of a diagonal with it and I'm not sure if it mattered once I put the blue on, <laughs> but that's where we are. Then I use my NYX glitter primer and put that all over like my cut crease situation. Then I use that darkest shimmery. This is the only shimmer in this palette, this dark blue, but it's quite stunning on its own, I gotta say. But because I'm me and I wanted to try the um, liquid shadows I got out, I went ahead and after I got done trying to mesh these together I ended up just putting the blue further over with my finger you'll see but then I went in to the ocean eyes liquid shadow first this beautiful cobalt blue oh my god I love this I think I could have done better without putting it on top of that blue shimmer because it tried to get patchy on me and I don't think that would have happened if I wouldn't have put that shimmer down first but Time will tell. This is a stunning blue, though, nonetheless. Then I went into Disco Queen, and I put that on the first portion of my lid, mixed in with that blue. It has such a light baby blue shift to it. I thought this made the eye look, look so, so stunning. And this, too... Um, I think they apply better when you just take them from the applicator straight on the eye and then maybe dab a little with a brush, but you live and learn using the e.l.f. eyeliner once again today because, yes, I'm really enjoying this eyeliner, guys, really. Totally worth the money and very affordable. And bam, got the rest of my face done. Now I'm going to take that reddish brown shade and work that as close as I can get it to the lower lash line. Then I'm going to use that fluffy brush that we used in that caramel brown just to buff out those edges a little and make it look nice and blended. I thought this was perfect on the lower lash line. I didn't want to add any of the blue because I intend to put it in my waterline. 
And then with that very first brush, I just made sure everything was seamless and blended. Now I went into Goddess from Urban Decay and put that in my waterline. Such a beautiful shade. I absolutely love it. But I topped it with a little bit of Winterfell Snow. Just to add that sparkly blue on top. I love doing this with my darker blues. Using that waterproof e.l.f. mascara, like I said before, this definitely builds up quite beautifully. I absolutely am liking this more than I thought I would. It actually even surprised me how much I like it, but especially on the lower lash. I like it more on the lower lash line, if I have to be honest. Then with those same Drama Queen lashes, because like I said, they're the only ones I have from e.l.f. at the moment, but I put those on. Used my tweezers to make sure those inner corners are down properly and my lashes mesh with those falsies, as I always do. And then I wanted to change things up, so I used my Jaclyn Hill Extra Highlight. I did spray this for my inner corner and right along the first part of that lower lash line. I like the way that looks if you're new here. But yeah, I put this on my brow bone as well. But that's the highlighter I have on my face as well in this video. Such a stunning highlight. But this isn't about her. <laughs> Bam! There's the final look. What do you guys think? Which look was your favorite? And uh, yeah, we shall get on to some final thoughts. Love you guys. All right, and that is all three looks completed. And uh, yeah, like I said, let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite. As of right now, it's really hard for me to choose a favorite because I kind of like them all. Just saying. But anyway, let's run down some of these products. You did see the brow products in every video. Um, I'm new to the pomade game. This is the first um, eyebrow pomade I've ever used. And I gotta say, I really, really like using a pomade. So, yes! This is definitely A plus for me. This is more of a C plus, but it's just because I have a hard time. It has, if you look, it has the point on it is so fat and round. I have a little bit of trouble with it. And of course, Thomas is waking up, but uh, yeah, I definitely, definitely, I've never tried another Palmade, so I'm speaking from just this one, but this I really, really am enjoying. Do want to give a special shout out to my e.l.f. sponge. I have had this sponge for months. This has outlasted every other sponge I've ever tried. Highly recommend it. This gets an A++, just so you know. If you're looking for a sponge that's going to last you, that baby's going to last you. Just saying. Okay. Some other products that I have really enjoyed that are stand out for me. Oh, I haven't even mentioned the prices. The brow products, the brow pencil is $2 and the pomade is $4. <laughs> These sponges are $5. I swear I paid $2 for this sponge months ago, but now they're 5 so... Okay, Elf, but that's okay because five dollars is still pretty reasonable to me personally. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is the matte putty primer. This baby is eight dollars, but I mean, I like it. I'm not sure if I like it with the foundation I'm trying today because believe it or not, with my oily skin, I think I have become a little too matte. But that's okay, because I do like this with almost all my, especially like my Anastasia foundation that's a little bit of a luminous foundation. This 
this is great. I, I'm actually enjoying using it. I think my pores look good when I use it. And yeah, I definitely don't regret this purchase at all. This is getting a, we'll give it a B because obviously you can't wear it with every foundation, but you can't with any primer in my opinion. Next products I want to talk about is foundation and concealer. This foundation here is the Flawless Finish Foundation. It is in the shade Vanilla. And I used their little quiz on their website, and I got to say, this actually matches me really well. However, it stinks. I do not like the heavy perfume smell in this at all. Not at all. It, I'm really turned off to the smell. I can smell it for at least an hour after I put it on. And that's a long time. It actually gave me a headache the first day I used it. So, but, um, and the wear is a little, mm, it is a $6 foundation, but definitely around my chin and around like my nose and my lip, I found that it didn't wear very well. It didn't wear very well on my nose either but I mean if it wasn't for the smell I gotta say I would probably wear this a lot more often because it's for a six dollar foundation it's not bad I, I have to admit and of course the camo concealer I know I paid five dollars for this but on the elf website I'm seeing it for six so I don't know if the price of it went up or what but I've always liked the camo concealer um it, it's sh like shape tape on steroids because <laughs> it's really, you don't need a lot of it. I do want to say that the more you use the, the more you can actually see your fine lines, but not bad. You know what I mean? No worse than the shape tape as long as you are sparingly with it, if you know what I mean. And try different ways of using it. A dry sponge or a brush see what works best for you that's my best advice on the camo concealer but I do enjoy it and I've used it including today in all the videos so this is what I'm wearing next thing I want to talk about is their contour palette this is what it looks like right here um, I'm not a hundred percent sold on this this is what I have on today. It wants to catch a little bit on the tops here, but I mean, I can get it to blend out. Uh, this baby, I paid $7 for in Walmart, but it looks like it's $8 on the e.l.f. website. So take that for what you will. Um, I'm not going to say I hate it, but I can't really say I love it either. You know what I mean? But if you're on a budget, it's definitely not all that bad. Next thing is the HD powder. I got this on the website thinking it was a setting powder and it's actually like a luminous powder. More like what I buff with, like my Marc Jacobs Accomplice powder or something like that. That's what it strikes me more of. So, but... um this baby retails for, did I say $6? It retails for $6. It's, um, it's not bad for a buffer, for sure. I can't use it to set my, um, makeup. I tried to use it to set my under eyes in the, the look with the green shadow with the jalapeno palette. And I did not like the way it wore as a setting powder. So I've been using my Anastasia ever since. And... That seems to be setting, that seemed to set down that foundation a little bit better. So that's where we are with this, but this isn't bad. I would definitely say if you are on a budget, this would be nice. I will probably use this up just because it's not bad. It's truly not bad. Then something that I actually got as um, a free item with my order was the this was called the aqua blush and bronzer duo um really nice packaging it actually i would say this almost feels like a luxury product this baby was six dollars though um the 
bronzer, I have to go in with a really light hand because it's almost, it's almost dark on me. But if you go in with a light hand, it doesn't look bad at all. As you can see, I didn't use a bunch bunch, but yeah. The blush, I have a little trouble building. It either is like pow in your face or too light. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. So I'm kind of mixed feelings on this, but not a bad product altogether, especially if you definitely like to be able to have a really subtle blush or a really pow in your face blush, if that makes any sense. A product that I am, however, enjoying quite a bit is this blush duo that I picked up. Again, the packaging is quite, it's quite nice feeling. Oop, there's my little plastic thing. Um, but they both have mirrors in them. And this one I, doesn't have a shade written on it. And I didn't realize that when I threw the packaging away like a week ago. <laughs> no, it's only been a couple days. But um, this one comes off really good. Especially this color right here. I really like this. I have this on top of the pink because the pink wasn't doing it for me today. But that's them swatched as you can see this lighter one doesn't come out that good at all but we're gonna try to put a little bit more see what I mean I mean I maybe if you're super super fair but I, I don't know I'm pretty fair skinned so I'm just not sure about that um, but this is only four dollars and like I said this is I I enjoy the um, orangey blush out of this don't regret getting it all wears nice all day long um yeah and then there's this baked highlight that i picked up this is originally four dollars i got it on clearance at walmart for two dollars so it's kind of dry feeling and it looks great on your finger but when you try to apply it if you like a really subtle highlight this might be for you um again with the jalapeno palette the green look that i do i'm actually wearing this highlighter on my face so you'll be able to see what you think of it it's not bad it's great like i said if you like a real subtle highlight not like the jacqueline hill that is beaming but uh not bad at all especially for the $2 clearance price I got it for. So it's hard to regret something that's $2. But like I said, it's pretty dry feeling. So I'd like to try some of the new ones they've come out with. And I intend to. This lip product is another thing that I got free with my order. Because I got to pick a couple different things. And this was one of the things I picked. Because I forgot to get it. I forgot to get a couple things. That's why I couldn't do a full face. But this wears like a satin but it says it's a matte this shade is berry bordox i don't know but it's it's a kind of a vampy shade uh it it didn't wear the greatest i would i would pass on this if it was me even for four dollars i don't know i don't know how much i'm gonna reach for this unless it's on top of a maybe a liquid lip that's this close to the same shade if I wanted a little bit of a satin feel. Then I have the Matte Magic Mist and Set Setting Spray and this setting spray retails for five dollars. I kind of like this setting spray. I don't think it's bad at all. For five bucks you can't beat it. I mean it it works. It does the job. My makeup wears good with it. I Maybe should do a situation Urban Decay one side and this the other just to see how much of a difference there is. But it's, I mean, a setting spray. I'm not trying to beat to death a setting spray. I, I don't regret having this setting spray. I'm definitely going to use this up. I like it. One product that was definitely high, high, high on my list was this eyeliner. This eyeliner is $6, and I mean, I'm just saying, 
it wears really good all day. It dries down looking pretty matte. And yeah, I would definitely compare it to how much I like the Anastasia one. I will probably repurchase this over that one because of price. I have to say, I, it works just as good. And it's, yeah, $6. <laughs> so yeah, definitely standout product in this test I've done. Which brings me to the mascara. I'm on the fence with this mascara. This mascara was $4 and it is a waterproof one, which I usually don't get. I got this by accident, but I, my uh, drunk elephant takes it right off. So even, um, like if I just use my wash in the shower, then I, it comes off fairly easy. So, I mean, I think I like it better for the lower lash line, like I said, because on the top lashes, I feel like I got to keep building it up. And yeah, I'm, <sighs> if I'm not wearing a big dramatic lash, it would definitely be a building process. So, but if you need an affordable mascara, that's not bad. You can definitely see my lower lash line doesn't look bad at all. You can't see the top because of the lashes, but that doesn't look bad at all to me. And yeah. I have to say, I, I would, if I needed mascara at an affordable price, that I would go try this again, probably. Okay, let's talk about the mini palettes. <laughs> I was blown away by how these performed. I'm just saying. I was so, so surprised. I have been sleeping on e.l.f. eyeshadows. I think they're stunning. I can't even decide which look was my favorite. I like these so much. And yes, um, I'll put swatches after this, after I get done with my thoughts, and then tell you goodbye, of course. But uh, yes, beautifully performing. I cannot say enough about them. Three bucks hit that girl because yes the liquid eyeshadows are a little pricier they're five dollars a piece and they are they are kind of tiny but i mean the thing about them is i have to keep playing around with them when i just did like an outline with them i thought they wore beautifully but today when i tried to put these two on top of shadow, you can see, I hope it comes off on camera, how kind of patchy it is. I almost think if you just go straight in and maybe just tap a little with your finger, maybe. I don't know. I have to use these a little more, but I definitely have enjoyed playing with them. Like I said, to do an eye liner with them, they are stunning. So... That's what I could say about that. And as a matter of fact, when I did the look with this, I actually ended up taking some of this and lining the top of that purple. And I really liked the way it looked. I liked the way it wore at the end of the day. The only thing I can say is I actually put this in my inner corner with this purple look. And it, it bothered my inner corner. But just the bottom... Of this eye just this eye so take that for what you will okay so editing Teresa <laughs> the drama queen lashes I do want to mention these are five dollars I'm not sure if they're all five dollars but this pair was definitely five dollars and I like them um, they have kind of a thick band but um, yeah I don't mind it so much because I've wore these for all three looks, and yeah, they're still in great condition, and they clean pretty nicely. So, all in all, what are my thoughts and opinions about e.l.f.? Um, I'm just going to say I'm pleasantly surprised with e.l.f. I really, really enjoyed doing this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thank you so much for watching my video. Let me know if I helped you out at all. Um, 
if you were on the fence about these products, I'd, I'd love to know what you think of everything down in the comments below. Um, are you going to pick anything up? Have you picked anything up? And what do you think of it? And that being said, um, we'll get to the swatches and then I will tell you goodbye. First up, I'm going to swatch the Carnival Candy palette. Then the hot jalapeno. Mm, I love this palette. I love them all. I'm not gonna lie. And a Caillou. And that's the swatches. Pretty good for three bucks. That's going to do it for another Teresa Tries Tutorials. I hope you're having a wonderful night or day wherever you are. Lots of love for me and Thomas to all of you. I hope you'll consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. And we will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.